Okay, guys. Now I'm going to try and defend Darwin because I think I understand where the Darwinians are going wrong. And hopefully I can advance the idea of where we could start instead to come up with an autonomic process that goes all the way back to the Big Bang and yet also explain the variation in life that we see. Okay? Now, if you're a Christian, you don't need to be threatened by this because the existence of an autonomic process still begs the question of where did the autonomic process come from? And the only answer we Christians know to that is God. Thomas Aquinas was trying to figure out this very thing, but Thomas Aquinas didn't know about string theory. String theory is a relatively new uh, bunch of theories in mathematics started in the 1970s that tries to account for the origin of the universe. Now what the scientists that are in cosmology are trying to do is they're trying to figure out how the universe got here. And the most promising um, answer to how the universe got here is in string theory, which is basically saying that there is a blueprint that operates by vibration that birthed all life as we know it, whether fast or slow. It can do it either way. That's an improvement on Darwin's idea, that there is a set of blueprints <coughs> in string theory. See, the origin of everything has to be mathematical, for sure. The Darwinians are starting in the middle process. They're starting with secondary results of the mathematical. That's why they're having so much trouble in trying to prove their point. So what you need to do is you need to go back to the premise that all life has a common source. And that's exactly what physicists are doing. Starting with um, our boy Einstein in the 1950s, the ideas that eventually came to be known now as string theory started. Einstein did know some things about it. It started to be understood in something called quantum mechanics. And if you want a quick and yet very um, excellent summary of all this stuff, you want to go here to Harvard, Harvard University. And this link will be in the sidebar in the video description. And just watch the videos here in order. That's the best way I can think of to help acquaint you with what I'm talking about. <coughs> is that string theory is going back to the beginning, which is what Darwin's theory never can do. And But like Darwin, like Darwin, is saying that all life has a common source. That's what's so appealing and commonsensical about what Darwin was trying to say, that all life has a common source. The problem with Darwin is that he's using the wrong method to explain the variation. Because genetic change is not by itself going to produce the variation he's trying to explain. But string theory might. Okay? And string theory, the biggest advantage of string theory, especially, you know, in light of what you're going to see in this video here, black holes and string theory, the biggest advantage of string theory is that it starts with a base. It's saying the whole universe was a singularity. And that singularity is the end process of a black hole. A black hole turns into a singularity. And then what Hawking discovered, Stephen Hawking, the physicist, what Hawking discovered, having first said back in 1970-something, that black holes end up causing loss of information. What, he, what was found out was that it's not really a loss of information, but instead strings, instruction sets. Physics, instruction sets. See, that's what a gene is. It's an instruction set. Physics instruction sets are contained in the black hole, so no information is lost. So a singularity is really a set of instructions, a blueprint. And when it explodes, it produces what a lot of physicists think is the Big Bang. So that what we call genes are little mini subsets 
subsets of strings. That accounts for why the genes do not mutate very much. They are bound by the blueprint in the strings. And the massive variation in life we see would be a product of the blueprint in the strings. Not the genes, but the strings. And now suddenly, if you're a Darwinian, you have a better explanation than you've had for the last 150 years. You've been looking in the wrong place. What have I been harping on? You can't account for a thing till you can go to the beginning. Well, what's the beginning? The beginning is a singularity. Okay? If the singularity contains all the strings, all the blueprints for all the fractalic variations in life, then something like the Cambrian explosion is immediately intelligible because it's just the strings operating. They contain the master blueprint. So no, man doesn't come from ape. Per, you know, I'm leaving out the Bible's explanation right now. Man doesn't come from ape. It comes from a different subsection of the blueprint in the strings that were in the singularity that birthed the Big Bang. You see the point? So you have a vertical variation in life from the strings, not a horizontal variation in life from the genes. Now the genes do vary, but one thing they do not do is they do not transmute. See, transmutation is, a, is the heart of current Darwinian theory, and it's wrong, okay? But what if instead the mutation, okay, being bounded, what if instead it's governed by strings that were inherent in the singularity at the time of the Big Bang? See, because you got more evidence here. It's math evidence, you still can't see it. But math is math. Math is very ordered. Math is something that you can prove and explain, even though you can't see it. You can prove it and explain it, and you can audit it and the whole bit. If strings contain the blueprint of life at the time of a singularity, and then at some, as it were, logical moment in time, that singularity birthed the Big Bang, then everything in Darwinism can be explained but in a different way from the basis of the strings at the beginning, not middle data with the little genes transmuting in bounded sets. Now, I don't know if what I just told you is true. It just makes sense, and it's possible to mathematically Com, you know, devise computer models and fractals to see if there's some way we can account for things like the Cambrian explosion or so-called punctuated equilibrium, la, la, la. Excuse me. <coughs> I'm allergic to the change in seasons. Okay? So start there. Start by looking at these Harvard University videos. They're, they're listed in, you know, time order. So start here and then go all the way down. See what you think. I mean, I can't prove what I'm saying to you is true, but it's a lot more coherent an argument that supports what Darwin was trying to do at a higher level that would account for more. And the best part about it is that it's math-based. So you can proof it, you can audit it, for the math theories and see whether they fit together. And it's a two-fold unity here. you got a unity between physics and biology, which is explained through the math. See? Mass in one place. Yeah, if mass is concentrated in one place, that creates a black hole. But a black hole eventually disappears. That's what Hawking found out turns into a singularity, and what they've just recently found out is that that singularity contains the strings, which is the blueprint for life. Now, they still got to test that theory. There's a lot of argumentation and controversy about string theory. 
But as you can see, that would do a better job of explaining the variation. And yet works like what we call genes. Yeah, because this would be the master for how genes even came to exist. It's a much more elegant way to try to pursue the argument of evolution than Darwin. But yet it preserves and sort of corroborates what Darwin was trying to do. So, you know, I'm sorry I rambled so much, but I'm really excited. So see what you think of that. Signing off.